I already consume a lot of turmeric, and during that stage of my life, I literally started putting in it everything. I mean, water, sandwiches, salads, freaking cake frosting, for Lord's sake. And I started to put it on my face. And you know what it did? It started to stain up all my pillows, my clothes, my bed. But I started to have a better knowledge of how to properly use foods. So I realized that every milligram of turmeric that I huffed in without the proper knowledge of how to actually use them, I probably wasn't doing a god dang thing for my body. So let's talk about that. is a rhizome or a horizontal underground plant stem that is capable of producing the shoot and root systems of a new plant, a part of the perennial plant Curcuma longa, which belongs to the ginger family. Its appearance is similar to ginger but has a tough brown exterior and a rich orange interior. This plant is native to India as it needs tropical climates and plenty of rain to grow. Turmeric usage dates back to around 4,000 years to the Vedic culture or a religious tradition in ancient India, where it was used as food, had some religious significance, and used in Ayurveda, a holistic approach to medicine based in Vedic beliefs, which translate to the science of life since around 250 BC. Before it was generally used as a spice in cooking, it was actually used and traded on the basis of being a natural dye for the skin and clothing as well as a medicine. Through trade, it probably reached China around 700 AD, East Africa by 800 AD, West Africa by the 1200s, and Jamaica in the 18th century. In 1280, Marco Polo depicts the spice as amazing, as it was a vegetable that presented qualities similar to that of saffron. Turmeric is often referred to as Indian saffron because of its deep yellow-orange color, but much more widely used due to its inexpensiveness. In fact, this is just one of its names because like Marco Polo, cultures all over the world describe the qualities of turmeric and how they name it. Just in Ayurveda, it has 53 names, one of which is Jayanti, or one that wins over diseases. Turmeric contains sugars, proteins, resins, and volatile oils such as turmeric, alantone, and zigeberin. But the most active ingredient that promotes bioactivity is curcumin. There are three curcuminoids found in turmeric, curcumin, demethoxycurcumin, and bisdemethoxycurcumin. And there are three different methods to utilize the power of curcumin for a host of maladies. Consumption is the most common way that people use turmeric. Taken orally, turmeric is used as a treatment for indigestion, abdominal pain, hemorrhage, diarrhea, flatulence, abdominal bloating, loss of appetite, jaundice, hepatitis, liver disease, gallbladder complaints, headaches, bronchitis, cold, respiratory infection, fibromyalgia, leprosy, fever, and cancer. <sighs> Unfortunately, the main active ingredient is curcumin which has a low bioavailability, which means, in layman terms, the body has a difficult time absorbing the compound, and inevitably, a large amount of turmeric would have to be consumed. For this reason, turmeric supplements are popular because they guarantee high concentrations of curcumin. But there are far better ways to eat turmeric so that curcumin can absorb to receive said therapeutic effects. If you have access to raw turmeric, then use it as raw turmeric has over 100 compounds that have been identified to have potent medicinal properties. When it is processed, or if only the curcumin is extracted, then it runs the risk of many of these compounds and therefore the properties to be lost. Certain combinations of curcuminoids and the various compounds alongside this produce more of a biological action than that of any singular curcuminoid. Add pepper to your turmeric. The majority of curcumin ingested gets metabolized before it can even be absorbed 
due to the activity of digestive enzymes in the stomach, intestines, and liver. Piperin, a compound of black pepper, has been shown to make curcumin more bioavailable because it is a potent drug metabolism inhibitor that protects curcumin from these enzymes that actively try to expel it from the bloodstream. It therefore boosts the absorption of curcumin by approximately 2,000% according to one study. Consume turmeric with fats. Curcumin has low solubility in water, but are lipophilic, meaning they combine and dissolve in fat. It is advised that cooking with fats such as cooking oil, dairy fats, almond, or coconut milk will optimize the body's absorption of curcumin. If you are taking a turmeric supplement, it is best to take it with meals that include these fats. Apply heat to turmeric. Many spice compounds are either altered or activated by heat. Research has found that exposing turmeric and curcumin to heat can increase its solubility in even water. Other studies have also shown that applying heat enhances the overall antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties of curcumin, such as a stronger ability to fight cancer cells. There was a question as to how high heat should be applied, and that answer depends on the spice. Turmeric is moderately sensitive to heat, so a shorter cooking time, like under 15 minutes, will not destroy turmeric, but should increase the bioavailability. A second most effective way is through topical treatment used as an anti-inflammatory for skin conditions or pain in the body, like ringworms, bruising, bleach bites, eye infections, inflammation of the oral mucosa, infected wounds, joint pain, and arthritis. This can be used by making a paste by adding turmeric to apple cider vinegar. And if you have creams or lotions lying around, that can be added too. You can use milk, yogurt, honey, aloe, and even water, depending on the ailment. Apply it to the desired area and rest for a moment. Follow that with rinsing off the paste with warm water to allow the solution to permeate through the pores. According to Ayurveda science, which focuses more on metaphysical and holistic methods than many contemporary sciences, agreed that the inhalation of turmeric may relieve congestion due to chronic colds or coughs. It can also stop hiccups and calm hysterical fits by breathing in through each nostril individually for the smoke to release large amounts of mucus from the sinus cavity. If burned with coconut or neem oil, it may act as a relief from sinusitis. In order to lessen the intake of carbon into the lungs, try boiling it in water as water absorbs the majority of soot while the vapors carry the turmeric residue into the body. So please, do your research about this method before attempting. As magical as turmeric is, there may be side effects to overconsumption as well as some limitations to consumption if you have different diseases. So always consult a medical professional Oopa loopa doopity doop. Turmeric is good for you. Oopa loopa doopity dee. Pass me my cup and give me my tea. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying this series. We're gonna do so much more with this series. Please, if you're enjoying yourself, educating yourself, like and subscribe below. And I look forward to going on this journey with you. And please stay hydrated.